Okay then, so what does it take to be a good scientist? I think a good scientist has to be incredibly curious. Somebody who's always questioning, not just the science, but themselves as well. You have to ask questions, but also ask the right question. So curiosity is obviously important. Is there anything else? A sort of bloody-minded refusal to fail. 90% of what you do doesn't work. You know, I try and get this through to my research students when they come bushy-tailed from their first degree, wanting, expecting to discover something. I tell you, you're going to go into a laboratory every day for three to four years and nothing you do will work. There must be someone who's prepared to just keep trying and you don't, I mean, you will get disheartened, but it's being able to pick yourself up from a setback and move forward. It takes a lot of hard work to become a scientist and something maybe they don't tell you in, in your science class is that a lot of science, or most of science, is failure. <laughs> Except every now and then, one Friday morning, you will look down a microscope and something will have worked and then it'll all take off and then it'll be exciting and that moment will justify all the slog of the previous year or two years or three years or indeed working life. So I think you have to be really, really stubborn and say to yourself, I really want to know the answer. I want to know why it's true and I want to work really hard to find out and I don't mind if I fail because I'm going to fail a hundred times and then you know that success is really sweet when you actually do discover something. It's the greatest feeling in the world. All my life, I, if I have a, you know, been successful, it's because I've made so many mistakes. And if you learn from your mistakes, the more mistakes you make, the better, because the more you learn. And you try to avoid making the same mistake twice. That's, it's, a, it's a good lesson, that, actually. But if you never make mistakes, you'll never learn anything. <laughs> you need to be imaginative, very, very imaginative. You've got to be able to think not just in straight lines. You have to be good at thinking in straight lines, but you also have to be able to take things that don't look as though they really do go together and understand where they go together. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to be brilliant. I think you just have to be creative. And perhaps think laterally. And you have to be prepared to go down a different route to the one that you thought you were going down and accept what actually maybe that's not right maybe this way is a better way and you need to have that flexibility it's an experimental it's experimental work by nature no one's done it before so you do come across problems that you have to fix and if no one's done the work you're doing before you have to forge new ground and i guess you've got to have a, a passion for it because nothing you do ever works statistically <laughs> And because it is a, you know, you are asking questions to which nobody will know the answer. There is no, often nobody else you can ask to help you. If you're using a specific technique that's not right for the job, then what technique can you use? And if there isn't one available, can you develop it? It's somebody that's constantly questioning everything that they do and how they do it. It takes absolutely all sorts. I don't think there's any generalisation you can you can make actually because there are so many different aspects to it you know sometimes you need somebody who will just grind away and grind away with great accuracy other times you need somebody who makes imaginative flights of fancy um, it's, it's it, there's no there's no rhyme or reason